This is a fan-based parody. Star Wars is owned by Disney. Please support the official release. Welcome to Four Eyes! Last time oh. <laughs> on Weekend Star Warriors. And we're four hours. Finding their path obstructed by a cave-in, our heroes were forced to find an alternate route to the Kauai Resistance. Ping Pong, being skilled in ore construction, fashioned four oars. Yay! Four oars! One more time! Four oars! <laughs> Which they used to paddle the emergency raft out into the middle of the dark cave lake. Paddle, 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 Seems paddle, like paddle, a paddle. smart idea. <laughs> we now rejoin our group, although sometimes to ensure the future, you must first look to the past. Having a good time? I'm a having a great time. Dunk your head inside the water. Oh, I'd yeah, like to see yeah. you cry. <laughs> so would I, actually. Island <laughs> isn't the answer. At this moment right now, I think it will be. Oh, no, we're not slavers. <laughs> Young lady, you're a diplomat. Can't you possibly find a way to... McClaw, you said you had spent the last six months killing slavers. Do you have any um, stories about that? Well, right after you and I split ways on Camino, I... Please, elaborate. Perhaps as you tell this story, we can all visualize it. <laughs> all right, so... If you want to stop slavers, Tatooine might be a good place to start. Good! I'll go! I want to kill them! Kill all those slavers! <laughs> What the f*** is this guy doing? Well, Claw is disturbed by this man. He wants to kill him, but he resists. No offense, but you don't look like the most peaceful individual. Ha 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 ha! But... Oh, didn't you hear me before? I said I'm gonna free you! Okay, I'm not sure this is sanctioned by the Rebel Alliance, so... Uh... DO IT! <laughs> okay. You don't know what tickles my pickle. LANDING PEE PEE! After going their separate ways on Camino, Liliana to go and find her way to Naboo, McClaw and several of the escaped slaves took their stolen weapons and managed to contact the Rebel Alliance. The Rebel Alliance were quite grateful with the weapons and personnel he brought, but seemed a little pushy about him joining. McClaw would have joined if their leadership hadn't been so busy playing politics. Apparently, an all-out attack on a slave world would incite unwanted retaliatory action. To McClaw, that just told him that they were cowards. The Alliance High Command said that their main goal was to overthrow the Empire, and only then would they be able to address the issue of slavery. This would take far too long for McClaw. So, he told them that if they weren't going to kill slavers, he'd just do it himself. We now join our hero outside the briefing room, as he has just finished telling the Alliance High Command exactly where they can stick their discretion. Go f*** yourself! McClaw, in the couple days since we have left you, what have you added to your arsenal and wardrobe? I have pretty much created an armor of severed bones. We've taken shoulder blades, created a breastplate out of it, and also a backplate. And they're all twined together with wire, so it holds together. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I had to protect my ribs, I have actual ribs. So, a <laughs> bunch of ribs stacked together so it's nice and tight, and then, again, wired onto the armor itself. And then for my legs, I also got taken some of the lighter bones and created thigh pads and also shin guards just for funsies okay let's just say overall that gives you an extra plus two to your armor class okay yeah plus one to both yeah so that's that's all as far as what i have is okay armor did you want to take any of the extra weapons with you no i still have my heavy blaster pistol my vibro Reich blade and my bowcaster. So. Uh, the Reich blade isn't vibro just yet. 
So I don't have it vibro yet. Mm -hmm. So I end up taking it somewhere so I can get it worked on. Would I be able to do that before I leave? If you want, but it may cost you about a thousand credits. Did I get paid for doing what I did or bringing in personnel for like freeing those slaves or no? They might give you a discount, but they're kind of stingy at the Rebel Alliance. What would be the discount? Half off. I'll do it. Okay. Just to get it done. So you said a thousand? Uh huh. So it's going to be 500? Yep. Okay, so I get it done. As you're leaving, after you told them where they can stick their discretion. Yeah. A young human approaches you. He's very short, especially compared to you. Mm hmm. He approaches you. Um, I excuse me, Mr. McClaw? Mm hmm. If you want to stop slavers, Tatooine might be a good place to start. I, I grew up there. I wasn't a slave, but I heard there was a town called Mos Espa, and there were lots of slaves there. I don't plan on going back anytime soon, but it's my home, and so if I can make it better by pointing you towards it, I figure I should. Good! i go! I want to kill them! Kill all those slavers! <laughs> okay, uh, I like your enthusiasm. I, uh... I was kind of hoping my friends Han and Chewie could give you a ride, since Han needs to pay someone on Tatooine, so it's perfect for him. Also, uh, Chewie's a Wookiee too, so it might be nice for you to catch up with your own people. Hmm. Good! Let's see. The kid walks over to a data terminal and does a quick search. Ah, uh, sorry. Chewie and Han have already gone on some side mission. I'd be willing to drop you off, but they've got me flying point on some supply raid. If uh, let me think. Oh, hey, Audrey, Commander Skywalker. How would you like a chance to prove your skills? A young woman who seems humanoid, but a little too fishy, especially the smell, to you. Mm. Young lady. That's foul. <laughs> Miss Audrey, uh, how would you like a chance to prove your skills? This here is McClaw. He's not signed up with us officially, but I've got a good feeling about him. He wants to go to Tatooine to help the people there, and needs someone to take him. Think you can do it? Yes, absolutely. I uh, Anything. Uh, I mean, they've, they've only given me a uh, little Y-Wing, but it's got two seats, and it's, uh, it's ready to go if you want to go. Good. Okay. So, you hop into the Y-Wing with your brand new Vibro function on your weak blade. Upon arriving on Tatooine, unfortunately, Adriatica was overcome by heat and elected to remain near the ship, more precisely on the ship in low orbit, in case McClaw ever required a hasty retreat. Mm. So, landing in Mos Espa, McClaw finds himself surrounded by multiple little shops. Where would you like to go? There's some food, there's a cantina, a weapons shop, parts shop, vehicles shop. Where can I go get? Animals shop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go free all the birds. <laughs> uh, where can I get health packs or hmm. health packs? Uh, closest would probably be the food. They don't have much medicine here. Okay, but, uh, a little bit food. of food. There's not much good food. Mostly jerky meats, and okay. it's run by some uh, fat alien that you don't really recognize. Oh, how can I help you? I want some of your best jerky. Okay, well, you, do you prefer like amphibious or? Um... Snake, or, uh, I don't know, um, rat? Snake. Snake. Okay, we got plenty of snake here. All right, uh, boy, get in here, he calls, and a young Bith shows up in ratty clothes. What took you so long? I was, I was preparing the, be ah, shut up. Get this man whatever he wants. Yes, uh, how can I help you? I want jerky. Okay. Best jerky you got. Okay. The boy, uh... Wraps up some jerky for you, hands it, and... Okay, here you go. The fat guy hits him upside the head and says, You idiot! Get the money first! Um, so, so, sorry, sir. Sorry, sorry. Don't hit him. Make an intimidation check <laughs> with a d6. Six. He is very scared, but if you don't appreciate how I do business, you're welcome to take it. Uh, elsewhere. I give the boy the credit, I take my jerky, and I say, Our transaction's done. Oh, oh okay. And I walk away. <laughs> Where would you like to go? <laughs> to the cantina. Okay. I need to find information. It is run by a human. Mm -hmm. It's rough and tumble, lots of bad 
rough and tumble people, and so, who do you want to talk to? The bartender himself, or any random person? Is there a maid or waiter that walks around, tending? Go ahead and roll... That's a one. Uh, you don't see one at the at the moment. They okay. seem to be hidden. Alright, I'll wait a while. I just try to find a seat if I can. The bartender waves at one of his employees, and a young purple Twi'lek comes over to you and says, Hello, how may I help you? I like a drink. Okay, um, what what kind of drink? Hard, soft, probably hard, given your... I'm a big boy. Okay, uh, we don't have any of the Kashyyyk ale you're probably used to. However, we do have some Karelian gut buster. That's usually considered strong by, uh, at least human standards. I'll take one. Please. Okay, she, uh, walks away, comes back with a huge-ass mug full of, essentially, whiskey, and places it down in front of you. Excellent. <laughs> Would I... you care to open a tab? No. I hand her what I owe. Okay. And well, I ask her to take a seat. Um, I, I'm, I'm working right now. My, uh, my master, I mean, my boss doesn't really allow me to take breaks. Your master? Uh, y- y- yes, kind of. Um, the, uh, the bartender is technically, uh, my owner. Hmm. Okay. So I let her go. I give her a tip. Okay. Probably a credit. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much that would be. <laughs> How's inflation? Out here, it's not that bad because there isn't much taxes that the Empire takes. Okay, so, yeah. A tip or two. Would you like to roll for a constitution uh, to yeah. see how well you... Now, I'm going to be sipping it. Okay. So it looks like I'm nursing it mm-hmm. and t- enjoying it, but I'm scanning the room. Okay. I'm looking to see if I see anything or anyone that may resemble that as a, of a slaver. Go ahead and roll for perception. Six. Oh boy. All right, so you see over in the corner, there is a very rich individual. He appears to be, let's say he's a Nikto. They look like their face is made of corn. And he has several very attractive females of various species sitting around him. Mm-hmm. And you notice that a lot of them have uncomfortable-looking collars around their necks. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he is is laughing, drinking, spending money, ordering a female Rodian to get him another drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I see a waitress coming by? You can wave one over. So you call the the purple Twi'lek woman Mm -hmm. over. Yes, uh, how can I help you? I want to know what drink it is that that man is ordering right now. Currently, he is ordering a, um, well, it's kind of a strange drink. It's called an apple teeny. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Sounds fruity. Yeah, it, it is very fruity. Hmm. Not, Not exactly our most popular one, but uh, he pays a lot of money for it. Hmm. How much? 20 credits. Jesus. <laughs> Apples are hard to come by on Tatooine. Mm. Most of our liquor is actually made out of mushrooms. Mmm! <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> if you want, I could probably slip him something that's just a shit ton of sugar and uh, say that it's an apple teeny from you. Yeah. All right, that'll only be five credits. Here you are. And <laughs> another, an extra credit for the information. Oh, and uh, you want me to spit in it? By all means. Thanks. <laughs> she goes over and hands him a drink. Uh, from the very dark, very tall gentleman over by the door. Is he, does he see me? Uh, he does, and he gives you a bit of a thank you. I nod. raise, I, I slightly raise my, my glass to him. He drinks it, and he seems to really enjoy it. Oh, good, good. <laughs> This pleases me. A couple minutes later, he whispers over to uh, a little Bothan female next to him, Mm -hmm. very scantily dressed, Mm -hmm. and she goes over to you and bows very respectfully and says, My master would like the opportunity to speak with you. I nod. Okay. Now? Uh, At your earliest convenience, of course. Now? Uh, Sure. Okay. (laughs) So I... I walk with my drink. 
Hey? I'm, I'm nursing this. All right, so I, I'm standing in front of the man. Ah, hello. How may I help you? You seem interested in my uh, my wares. I like what I see. Mm-hmm. I only keep the finest wares around here. Mm. Any particular one tickle your fancy? I didn't want to assume much, but I figured one with hair would be the best for you. You are quite correct. Yeah. Do you have any? More of my taste. Oh, um, sorry, I don't believe I have any Wookiees at the moment. Mm. There are some shipments that may come in or may not. They've been a little slow here, so we've mostly had to take just whatever we can get. Hmm, interesting. I'd like to know when your next shipment comes in. Maybe then? Well, the huts have been very tight on whatever slaves they want. Mostly they've been just sending me their, uh, their dregs. Mm. Mm. I mean, I like them, and a lot of other people like them, but uh, the huts, uh, they, they tend to prefer the ones with uh, a bit more... Junk in the trunk. <laughs> the fat ones. They love the fat ones. Mm. Mm. Ever heard of an Ascadian? Yes. I yeah. Have. They're really, really fat, and they got six tits. It's awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> As he's trying to swallow the vial that's trying to come up his esophagus. Claw is disturbed by this man. He wants to kill him. But he resists. Let me see the merchandise you do have. In case if I do see something that tickles my fancy. Would you care to see one in private? Actually, I'd like to see all the ones you may have. Hmm. Well, uh, they are right here. All of them? All of them. Mm. I keep them all right beside me. Hmm, they look all lovely. Let us go meet at a private location right now, so we can speak business. Are you planning to buy them all? Maybe. Make a persuasion check. They would Ooh, be cunning. My cunning. Two. Mm. Plus two, four. I am not exactly comfortable with going in private. You can see one of them in private if you want, but... I prefer to do my business in the open, where everyone can see. Mm, okay. I take... Does he have a Twi'lek? We'll say yeah, of course he's got a Twi'lek. Right. He's got a, a little orange one. Okay, I take the little orange one. I go to a room. Alright. And I talk to him. What may I do for you? I, in my travels, I may have picked up something that could probably do some harm. Oh, you mean you want to give her a knife? No. What? I'm gonna poison him. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, do you hand the poison and explain it to her? Yeah. Uh, well, I tell her this. I'm going to buy him a drink. I want you to go get it. I want you to pour this sugary drink that tastes so bad if it's not mixed with something that it's going to make him so happy. Are you explaining to her that uh, I just want her it's, to put it into a drink? Are you explaining to her that it's poison or not? Yeah, I'm also telling her it's bad for her. Okay. Uh, well, it's it's not that I've I haven't thought about it. You're gonna do it. Uh, the thing is, slaves on Tatooine. We all have. We're all implanted with a device that explodes if the. If the master doesn't enter a code every every week, so if he dies, I, all of us will die. He said every week. Every week. So you got a week. When was the last time he changed it? About five days ago. So you got two days. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we got two days to figure this out. Uh, what exactly is your plan? You want to die a free Twi'lek or be a slave for life? Roll a presence. To see if you can convince her. Oh. Three plus two. <laughs> okay, um, look, I'm willing to, to try it, but I kind of would prefer that you find out how to disable this before 
before you actually do kill him. You chicken it out on me! No, 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 I, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> Make an intimidation check with presence, with advantage. Uh, four plus presence is six. She she takes the poison, uh-huh. and are you going to exit and go back into the cantina? Mm, we're going to both go out together. Okay. I tell her before we walk out, I just inspected you. I looked you over, wanted to see the goods. We didn't have this conversation. Y- yes, sir. Okay, we walk out. So, how did you like her? I like her. <laughs> now, shall we discuss price? How much for this one? Oh, I couldn't part with her for any less than, um, let's say, lowballing it for you, 3000 Look, you just told me they're the dregs. Uh, maybe the I can dr- easily go to the huts. Oh, go ahead, but I'm not sure you'd really like the uh, junk in the trunk, babies. Mm, you don't know. You don't know what tickles my pickle. From what I say, she seems to tickle your pickle. Oh, I can also find another one, maybe a different shade. Ah, <sighs> I suppose. Well, it has been a pleasure doing business with you. I think we should probably just part as friends, shall we? Very well. Let me get you your next drink. Oh, I'm very grateful for this. All right, so I go order it. This time clean, and I tell the tweet like, I was like, you should go get it for him. I walk away, (laughs) and I sit down at my table, sipping my drink. He uh, raises his drink to you, he drinks it. He's laughing at some random joke, and then blood starts coming out of his nose. He checks Mm -hmm. it very confused. He tries to laugh it off, and then he keeps laughing and spewing up strange, dark blood. Dark, frothy blood. He's coughing, screaming, blood is coming out of his ears, eyes, nose. I go to check on him. And he stares at you, recognition in his eyes of what you've done. He reaches for his blaster. I hold his arm down as I'm trying to help him. (laughs) Ever so concerned in my eyes. (laughs) And are you going to say anything to anyone else? To who? The girls? I don't know. Say to get a doctor or something? No. Okay. Why? <laughs> this is Tatooine. <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> there are no doctors on Tatooine. Are you okay? Are you fine? What's going on? And, and I'm waiting his, for that last death gurgle. His eyes roll into the back of his head. He starts to gurgle. And then... <laughs> His eyeballs pop out backwards Yay. with their strings coming out first rather yeah. than the pupils. Nice. All right. Everyone is shocked and staring, and then... I take his money. And they all glare at the bard keep. Uh-huh. Murderer! <laughs> what? I didn't, I didn't do anything. What the... What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Call, call the police or some... or uh, I don't know. Whatever authority we have. <laughs> Are they gonna go after him, or what? what I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, at the uh, scene here. I'm, I'm, I'm reading the, the room. Well, a couple of the uh, nearby pilots that are semi-military types mm-hmm. grab him and hold on to him. Uh-huh. And one of them uses his comm link to contact the local authorities, who are sort of stormtroopers, but they're more like the crappy stormtroopers no one wants, who don't even have polished armor, just have, like in the movie Solo, what okay. Han was wearing. Now, the waitresses, do they also have collars? The thing about the collar, the collar was just aesthetic, really. The implant is under the skin, and the waitress is looking very nervous, and is begging the troopers, please, please don't take him away. I'm due for my next code input on uh, in two days. Do I hear this? Yeah, and they say, not to worry, ma'am. We will keep him alive, and you will, you will have to visit him to have your code inputted. Bullshit! They turn to you. You have an objection, uh, Mr... McClaw! Okay, uh, what exactly do you propose as an alternative? They have no fault in this. He's the one who murdered the Patreon. And guess what? Those slaves over there are also in trouble too because they are in the same situation. How is it that they have to go visit the person who killed this man and he still has some form of rights to slaves? They should be freed. Hmm. They've paid their dues. 
Well, it seems that way. I believe we'll have to contact the Huts. Um, they will be Forget able... Forget the Huts! They paid for them already, so therefore they don't belong to the Huts. Technically, they do. The law is quite well established on Tatooine. If... Really? Yes, if... Established? Ha 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 ha! He laughs. Because he knows the laws around here. There's none. It's a Wild West. The laws are established by the huts, and if they have slaves that the slave owners are not respecting, then they take over and find them a new master. Do I have any idea where I would go to try to find out how somebody can crack those codes? You might be able to find someone knowledgeable around the city if you go out and search. Okay. Possibly at the uh, the parts shop. All right. Are these slaves going to be detained then? No, they they will be allowed to take over the business and actually make some real money while their owner is away. Very well. So will they be able to pay for their freedom if they need to? Or if they could? It would probably take them a while. Definitely longer than two days. They but will they, still they be have. able to earn credit still on their own? Yes. Okay. All right, cool. I'm going to go find somebody who can can break these <laughs> like hack into these shits all right so you go to the junk shop uh-huh and you see a little fat blue thing with wings and what looks like a tapered snout he is currently wearing a strange metal hat that looks like it was part of a droid okay and he is yelling at a couple of pit droids which have the same hat that he has <laughs> You don't understand his language. Do you want to walk up to him? Yes. He looks up to you, dusts all of the crumbs off of himself, licks his finger, puts back some non-existent hair over his head as he puts his hat back on. Ah, how may I help you, sir? I'm looking for a man of spe- of a specialty. Hmm, and uh, what kind of specialty are you referring to? Cracking slave collars. Well, the collar is easy, but uh, I get the feeling that you mean something mm-hmm. a little deeper. Correct. Hmm. Yes, I figured this day would come eventually. Step inside. Let me, uh, let me talk to you. Okay. <laughs> so you duck down, mm-hmm. hit your head, ow, almost, ow, ow. <laughs> on the way in. I'm squatting. Mm-hmm. This little waddling blue alien seems to have wings, but they have long since shriveled to the point where they can't really do anything. Mm -hmm. Now first tell me, what is your interest in these slaves? You want them for yourself? Yeah. Mm. That's it. Roll for deception for cunning. (laughs) No, I don't. He can see. He can hear the sarcasm in my voice. I'm glad to hear that. You see, I myself used to own slaves once. It seemed profitable at first, but the emotion, the toll that it takes on both them and myself, is far too much. I have trouble sleeping at night without a great deal of alcohol. I've sometimes wanted to do something different, but. I am very old. I am very fat. There is not much I can do. But you seem young and strong. Mm. So, if you were to free all of these slaves, what would be your uh, your plan for dealing with the huts or getting them out? What exactly do you want to do? Cripple their slave trade. Hmm. And then go after their heads. Hmm. Their heads. Whatever gelatinous thing it is. Yeah, huts, uh, I mean, it's hard to define between the body and head. There is kind of a lack of a neck there. But, let me tell you a story. I have a man named Brady. <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Cappy. He taps the metal hat, which is clearly... (laughs) You see, eventually I decided that slaves were no good. I decided to stick with droids. He references the various pit droids running around. They may not be as uh, meticulous, but I don't have to deal with all of the crying and sadness and all of the guilt that I get myself. 
but I've grown rather familiar with the workings of slave implants. This one time, a slave master pissed off the big hut himself, Jabba de Silicitur. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his last name right. Most people just call him Jabba the Hut. So, this hut activated a signal that detonated the slave's implants all at once. Took out the slaver too. The story varies, but it wasn't pretty. What I'm getting to is this. That signal would have had to come from somewhere very high up. And Jabba didn't have any ships in orbit at the time. Also, the suns give far too much radiation off to maintain any satellites around this planet. So that leaves one source. The high tower on his palace. Now what I'm thinking is this. If the tower can transmit a kill signal, perhaps it can also transmit a cancel signal as well. As to how to get to that tower, that will be more difficult. Jabba isn't just going to let you waltz in, and getting his trust takes months. From what I have heard, you only have two days. They have ears everywhere. Technically audio receivers, but uh, we're just talking semantics. Now, you can't simply blow up the tower, as, who knows, I could activate the kill signal on everyone on the entire planet. But, as uh, old Cappy here sees it, your best options are lie with two of the native species on the planet. The Jawas and the Sand People. It would be best to enlist both, but you could try to do it in just one. With just one. What do you say? Can you remove the explosives from their necks? Hmm. That is a little more difficult. You see, in my time I have been tinkering with a little device. He holds out a security spike. Mm -hmm. If this were able to get into a transmitter big enough, the only one I can think of is the one that's possibly in Java's tower, mm -hmm. it would fry every single circuit. So the implants would still be in place, but they would be harmless. Of course, uh, after that, we could surgically remove them just in case. Well, I have some that need the surgically removed. Okay. Right now, they're either free because their owner's dead, or freed for a moment because they're detained. The implants are very sensitive. It is impossible to remove them via surgery while they are still active. Now, I've got some friends who I may be able to give a call. Mm -hmm. I can help you get in with the Jawas. They might be able to work inside Jabba's palace. Jawas and Jabba's. <laughs> and possibly mess with the security so they don't notice you. However, you may want to enlist the Tusken Raiders, the Sand People as well, if you want a real distraction. They are no friends to the Huts, or anyone for that matter, but... They could provide a very useful distraction. Okay. I may know a slave who has done dealings with them in the past, who may be willing to help you. I can get the Jawa root ready right now. In the meantime, go and uh, and talk to the jerky monger. <laughs> his, uh, his slave has a strange... <clears throat> yeah, excuse me. A strange obsession with the, uh, the Tusken Raiders. He has actually managed to negotiate with them to not attack us. The slave boy? Yes, uh, the Bith. Uh, yeah, I know. Is it the same one that... Yes, okay. it is. Good. Now, why don't you go and contact him while I contact my uh, Jawa friends? Very good. I'll meet you here in an hour? That should work, yes. Okay. You walk over to the chubby alien uh, jerky monger. I don't run no problem. I don't run no problem. You're not gonna get any. And he's holding a small, comically small blaster on you. That's especially comically small in his fat, greasy fingers. I laugh. <laughs> I giggle. I giggle. Put it away. What Put do you want? He lowers it, but he doesn't holster it. I want to talk to your boy. Boy, get in here. The uh, little blue bith. Yes, uh, how am I going to help you? Had a question for you. Uh, uh, yes? 
Sand people, do you know anything about them? Oh, absolutely. I've, uh, I've studied them extensively. I know Hold their on. language. I... I look at his owner. I give him ten credits. I want to talk to him in private. He bites the credit, gestures at the slave to go with you for a bit. Okay. So? So you go off into this town square. We go somewhere where not many people would be paying attention. How, how, how can I help you, sir? Tell me about sand people. Well, they're, uh, they're a very proud species. They are quite violent, and they really don't take kindly to any outsiders. They have a very strict religious sect where they, they hate all machines. They believe that uh, to walk, to travel across the sand with any separation, such as by a machine, is uh, blasphemous, and that's why they only ride animals. And they respect strength. I'm not exactly sure what else to tell you. Do you know their language? Yes, it's, uh, it's a little hard for me to enunciate, but I can understand them, and they tend to, at least their higher-ups, tend to understand me pretty well. I've, uh, I've negotiated with them uh, in the past in order to uh, keep them from attacking us. So I've heard. I need your time. Um, I need your skill. Uh, but I also need to talk to your master. Okay, um, sure. We can uh, we can talk to him right now if you want. Are you willing to help me first? Uh, absolutely. Because I need you to negotiate a deal for me to attack the huts. He seems a little taken aback by this and starts thinking. This could be your freedom. Hmm. And uh, and there's no way that my master would get any wind of this, is there? As far as he knows. I need you to help create a further of a peace treaty between this settlement and them. Hmm. The less he knows, none the wiser. Uh, I think you might want to come up with a better excuse than that. I mean, no offense, but you don't look like the most peaceful individual. Um, perhaps say that we are establishing some kind of new trade route with Moss Espa, your whatever organization it is, and maybe that'll convince him. Sounds good. I like what you're thinking. We walk um, back to the fat guy. Uh-huh. And what do you want? I want to know if I can use your slave here to run an errand for me. Mm. But it'll take time. I will pay you for his time. 20 credits an hour. Hmm. This may take a day. Ten. Fifteen. Thirteen. Thirteen? And you buy five pieces of frog jerky. No one likes them. I already bought jerky. Yes, but you bought snake jerky. I look at him with a glaring look. All right, <laughs> roll for intimidation. Three. Three. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, thirteen. <clears throat> so, you, uh, you take little Tucker with you. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Tucker. My name's Tucker, by the way. Tucker. Personal gear, Tucker. <laughs> Took him, got him on my notes. As you're walking, the little Twidarian, the little blue guy, flags you down. Okay, I've, uh, I've set it up. The sand crawler with the Jawas should be coming here in uh, just about uh, half an hour. Mm. Just uh, stay near the outside of uh, the town, and uh, they will be there shortly. I, I will come with you. I will translate. Don't worry. Yes, uh, unless uh, Mr. Tucker, uh, you wouldn't happen to speak Java. Uh, no, no, I don't. Okay, I'll come with you. All right, good. I got my emissary, and I have my translator. All right, so... Half hour later, the huge-ass sand crawler rolls up very uh -huh. slowly, lowers its ramp, Mm -hmm. Very brightly lit inside, and would you care to walk up or let them come out? Them come out. Okay. Element of surprise. Oh my God. The Jawas come out, escorting several droids with them. Mm -hmm. I uh, I may have told them that you would be interested in buying droids. No, you don't have any obligation to do it. It's just uh, more guns. They're very uh, they're very money oriented so they kind of don't like to uh, show up unless they're getting a profit let's say i may be able to work something with them okay <laughs> so in my own private army so he uh he shows up and he says um, <laughs> 
in a weird, mm-hmm. strange language. The Jawas talk back and forth with him. I, I have explained your uh, your situation to them, and uh, they they actually understand basic. They just kind of prefer if I speak to them to start with. But um, you'll have to convince them it is worth their while to go in and <laughs> screw around with Jabba's palace. You wouldn't have any what ideas. I, what if I bought droids from them to use for this little excursion? Okay, uh, they look at each other and say that would help. However, we need to with make sure that it's bonus. really worth our while. With an added bonus. If they successfully get me there. Okay. They're still thinking about it. They say that long term is really what they're looking for. They want something that will be a good business practice for them. What are they looking for? They want, well, he whispers, they want some way to corner the slave market. They want to make it so that people aren't buying slaves, they only buy droids. Then what are they willing to put in in order for that to happen? Quid pro quo. So are you saying that... Hold on, let me try something with them. Okay, there's a bit of an exchange. Okay, I think I've got it. They like the idea of all slaves being cut off, because then everyone will have to buy droids. Let me just try to uh, sweeten the deal with them. I will uh, work out the logistics. Uh, Why don't you stay here and uh, inspect their merchandise? Uh, That always makes them happy. Tell them to show me the battle droid, if they have any. Well... One of the Jawas escorts you over to several droids that could possibly function as battle droids. Or gun droids. They're mostly just big balls or big domes or big spider leg thingies. And uh, a couple protocol units that seem very Any clumsy. surveillance droids? The closest to a surveillance droid is a Treadwell, which is pretty much a bin- pair of binoculars on a stick. Oh. <laughs> Roll for perception or... What is it? I guess cunning again. Cunning. I got a four plus two is six. All right. One of the droids jerks, uh-huh. and you notice that a small piece of flimsiplast crumpled uh-huh. up. I picked it up. Okay. Can you I read? Yes. Okay. So you can I read. read it. <laughs> okay. It says, uh, "Please free us. We are slaves too." That <sighs> just got my butt blowing. Oh man, okay, so now now I have a moral conflict. Mm-hmm. Personal gear, Tucker. <laughs> Damn it, I'm a translator, not a doctor. <laughs> Formalities later! Running now! Go, go, go! <laughs> okay, but if I die, I'm haunting your ass. Okay, you wouldn't be the first. I need your air support. My location. Got it, airstrike on your location. Coming in. I don't trust my pilot. Tucker, do you see lightning PP? Lightning PP! <laughs> all, of, all of this guy's blood is now on the ground. Tucker! Did you see that? <laughs> I, I wish I hadn't, but... It, That's yeah. called the Kashyyyk Blossom! <laughs> and kill everybody on Tatooine. <laughs> nope, this bitch from orbit! You're not including me in that, are you? Bacon! Thanks for listening to Weekend Star Warriors. I am your host and game master, John Ike. Star Wars was created by George Lucas and is owned by Disney. This game follows the basic rules of the Edge of the Empire role-playing game, and rule books are available for sale wherever books are still sold. McClaw was played by Edgar Cuevas. You can try to follow him, but do so at your own risk. Music by Megan Cordero. Effects by Jeffrey Gardner. Special thanks to Mike Christensen and Marisa Cuevas. Please like, subscribe, and review, and we will release the next episode in a couple of weeks. Thanks for listening, and remember... There are no doctors on Tatooine.